Hi, and welcome to the third episode of Culture Watch Radio. I'm Andrew Smith, and with me is Bill Muhlenberg. Great to be with you again. Thanks, Bill. This week we're talking about abortion in Australia. Yes, another big issue. Uh, we tend to hit the pretty heavy-duty ones, but they're vitally important, obviously. And uh, as in so much of the Western world, we've got a, a huge problem with uh, what do we call the the culture of death with uh, something like 100,000 uh, unborn babies a year being killed here in Australia, adding to a much bigger total around the world. So uh, it's a big issue. And uh, as we'll discuss, it's not just what's happening inside the abortion clinics, but often uh, even outside as well. We see the, the same mindset of death and destruction taking place. So it's a, re- a very real battle. Uh, and one that we have to be up on. And you can't say too much about the future of an entire nation when they kill off their young. Mm. No, that's for sure. It's uh, a good sign that uh, a nation is going down the tubes pretty fast when its own uh, unborn are treated this way. It's often been said that a nation will be judged on the way it treats the most innocent, the most vulnerable. Obviously, the unborn uh, would certainly rate high up there in this category, and uh, we're not doing well. We have a bad track record of it, and uh, the good thing is there are those who are working to turn this around, just as we had uh, those fighting the slave trade a few centuries ago, and eventually uh, they succeeded, at least in the West. So, too, here we're having... Many who know this is wrong, they're doing all they can to withstand it, and uh, we believe we'll see some changes in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, and one of those groups who actually turn up to the front of an abortion clinic and, and do what they can is the Helpers of God's Precious Infants group. Yes, absolutely. There are a number of groups. This is one of them, and they've been very faithfully uh, very persistently standing outside various abortion mills in Australia. And, uh, well, they've got stories to tell of people who've changed their minds and people at least who've finally got a, a different view of what actually happens happens with an abortion. So they're to be commended for so patiently and uh, faithfully standing for the unborn. And sometimes the others that are there aren't too happy about it. And it's not just the clinic workers who you obviously see that turnarounds for abortions are bad for business. Well, quite right. It's uh, those who are standing faithfully, peacefully, usually just with a a quiet prayer vigil. Uh, Often it can be on the receiving end of this very thing. Those who, uh, as we say, obviously have a hatred for life and therefore have a hatred for everyone, not just the unborn. And we've had some of these people being attacked uh, even recently in Australia, and it goes to show what we're up against. And one of those uh, was in Albury. Yes, well, recently we had a a very shocking case of this happening to uh, a small group, again, of uh, peaceful uh, pro-lifers having a a calm and quiet presence outside of uh, an abortion mill. But one man, almost uh, 70, was actually violently and physically assaulted and knocked to his ground by a very angry a uh, man who uh, showed no remorse afterwards and, in fact, came back to offer more. So this is uh, part of what it is for the pro-life group to uh, simply have a presence, not knowing what kind of violent reprisals they may, in fact, feel. And this is a, a story that we actually broke on LifeSite News. And I can tell you from talking to the people that the helpers, um, they were actually on the opposite side of the road to the abortion clinic. So they're mm. not out at the front. They're not interfering with anybody going in. They're actually across the road on the other side, and they're just standing there silently praying. Yeah, well, that's right. There's nothing uh, preventing somebody from going into the, the abortion mill. So, uh, And yet this uh, enraged fellow uh, saw fit to cross the road, go over and uh, flatten, uh, like I say, this elderly uh, gentleman, uh, just uh, indicating the rage that's within him. And um, this uh, tells us what we're up against. It's, you know, spiritually speaking, it is a spiritual battle. There are 
forces of darkness at work as well. But people who uh, can condone and countenance killing of their own children, well, lashing out at the elderly, that's not surprising either. We could certainly do with some strong young men who can stand there. (laughs) (laughs) So it's not just an easy time picking on the older ones who are actually turning up to do this. Yeah, well, look, a lot of easy targets, no question, and we certainly could use more. Uh, Everybody is invited, obviously, to this in Albury and other uh, peaceful protests. We could use more who are willing to stand and just, again, silently witnessing to life, praying for those going in and out. We have a a great need for more helpers in this sense to... uh, stand in effect on behalf of the unborn for those being led to the slaughter. So, yeah, the easy targets are obviously elderly men and women, and they have received a fair amount of abuse. It's not just in Australia. We have cases in America and elsewhere of this very thing happening, pro-lifers being attacked in a pretty rough and nasty fashion. So uh, it's part of the cost you have to pay for standing up for the unborn. Bill, If it was the gates of Auschwitz that people Mm. were standing out in front of, would Mm. the public still get it? Well, you know, that's the issue, isn't it? We had similar kinds of um, either denial of reality, uh, you know, Germans claiming, oh, I didn't even know this was happening. Or if and when they did know, uh, you know, did they do anything? Did they raise their voices? Did they take a stand? So I think the... uh, comparison is actually a legitimate one in today's age the internet age well it's it's pretty hard not to know what's going on in an abortion mill it's hard not to know that uh, some pretty savage means are used by which a baby might be uh, burned to death or ripped to pieces or in various ways uh, killed and often a quite a painful uh way so um to have this excuse of, well, I didn't know, and uh, sorry, uh, that doesn't cut it anymore. Uh, I think none of us are without excuse. We do know what happens. Uh, What happens is pretty clear. Two people enter into an abortion mill, and if an abortion takes place, only one of them walks out alive. So that is the reality of abortion, much like the Germans uh, should have known what was happening back uh, 70, 80 years ago. Uh, today, Australians should know what's happening in the abortion clinics. Well, with all the things that you've written about, what do you know of that is the most effective at changing people's minds when they're coming up to an abortion clinic? Well, there's a, a number of different strategies that have been employed. Uh, one very helpful one, actually, in, a, in the U.S., uh, some groups have simply uh, pulled together, got some money and bought uh uh, ultrasound machines or, uh, you know, in putting in a van, uh, driving to the abortion clinic and saying, hey, would you like to have a free uh, ultrasound? Have a look at uh, what's inside. Look at the baby. And uh, when they do this and some of the women who have no idea what they're carrying or they should know, but they don't. Uh, they go into the van, have this free uh, procedure done. And wow, quite a few women have. Uh, rightly so, changed their minds. Oh, I didn't know I had this, you know, there's baby fingers, hands, feet, toes. I mean, this is a real baby. It's not a blob of tissue. It's not a clump of cells as I've been led to believe. So something like that can be quite effective. So again, it's a matter of getting truth out there. We have to let people know this is what's happening. This is the real story with abortion. And my understanding is when that happens, the turnaround rate for people Mm. deciding not to then have an abortion is 80%. Yeah, no, it's very high indeed, and and rightly so. If you've been led to believe this is just some clump of cells, like you're having your tonsils removed or a fingernail clipped, and then all of a sudden, uh, right, you're face-to-face, you can see within your own self on the screen, wow, here's a a moving, uh, feet-kicking, wiggling baby, a real baby. It's got uh, everything. He or she has arms and legs and fingers and nose and toes. Uh, you know, how can that not change anybody who isn't fully calloused and hardened over 
So yeah, that uh, 80% rate is a tremendous uh, success. And, uh, you know, maybe we can try to do something like that here in Australia. It costs money, it takes time, it takes effort, but hey, anything to save the unborn, that's always gonna be worth some effort. Bill, I've also heard good stories of uh, people using fetal models. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's very viable uh, strategy as well. We have scientifically accurate little plastic models at various stages of the de- development of the unborn baby. So you can see and even hold in your own hands. Oh, this is what my baby would be like just now. This is the size and shape. These are the features of my baby that I'm carrying. So yeah, those uh, sets of uh, models are uh, widely available and can be very successful again, just to show, uh, say, the, the mother in question, uh, this is what is happening right now inside of you. This is not, again, a clump of cells, but it's a very real, distinct individual, a very real human being with these features at the moment and, uh, you know, should be allowed to continue in her or his development into uh, full life and, uh, you know, the whole human gamut. Why cut it short now in the womb? So, Bill, the people who are out there doing this, uh, standing up in front of the clinics, they've obviously got a lot of experience under the belts and, yeah. and also they're having some good success. They just need more people. Yeah, so yeah. if somebody's listening to this and they want to get involved, and maybe if it's only on a Saturday morning that they can front up and, and stand there, which ironically is probably the busiest time for an abortion clinic, yeah. what can they do? Well, yes, you've already mentioned one group in Albury, which has uh, they're doing work in various places in Australia. Uh, there'd be a number of such groups. Uh, again, you think of Right to Life, for example, or here in Melbourne, we have Pro-Life Victoria. Uh, most states would have their own, uh, or at least capital cities, their own groups, easy enough to find, get in touch with. They'd be more than happy to uh, tell you when the next uh, prayerful presence will be held. Um, Mind you, I've even known of groups concerned. I've spoken on the abortion issue to a group of young people. They took the initiative. They uh, found out where their local abortion clinic was, and they themselves just went out on a Saturday and went and had a prayerful, quiet presence there. So in one sense, you don't even need to uh, connect with groups, but sure, the, many have been doing this for decades, really. It's good to plug in, but if need be, take the initiative, do it on your own and just get out there, uh, be in prayer, uh, have some material with you, like the the developing baby models that are available. And, um, you know, you, you just don't know how we can, uh, how many minds can be changed and hearts can be won over if we do that. And of course, if you want all the information, just go to Culture Watch at BillMuhlenberg.com. Many thanks again.